need to approach students from a presumption of confidence. Um, sometimes the IEPs can be really discouraging and kind of scary in terms of, you know, what am I going to do with this student? And if we um, each decide to approach each student in a way that gives them the benefit of the doubt from the from the get-go and really look at um, trying to assess their strengths. I think that can be a super um, open and positive way for a student to experience a classroom and, and a teacher. Um, I work specifically with individuals on the autism spectrum and I do con uh, consultation with schools about how do you support students that are on the autism spectrum to be as successful as they can within the classroom. And one of the things I've learned over the last probably four or five years more than ever is that there are some really important research that so, so much of um, the general population is missing related to autism. So I like to highlight it and um, it is related to movement differences in autism. And those movement differences I have found have led to a lot of kids being presumed something other than competent simply because they have a difficult time getting their bodies to do what they want their bodies to do. And um, oftentimes it's observed to be defiance or it's, deserved, it's uh, observed to be, um, you know, them being stubborn or them being uh, difficult and um, especially students who have complex communication difficulties. Um, there are a number of students that we're serving in public schools that just really do not have a reliable means of communication. And schools are trying their best and they're, you know, trying all these different strategies, but um, because of the movement differences, oftentimes these students are seen to be functioning far below grade level. They are um, evaluated to have low IQs. And what I'm finding is that oftentimes that is just simply because the, the measures that we have to determine their um, IQ or their functioning level really rely on two things and that is reliable communication, a reliable speech, or a reliable movement, um, a reliable point to be able to touch a choice that they are making and that sort of thing. And um, if these students don't have either of those, then we're kind of left to what we see with our eyes. And oftentimes what we see with our eyes looks like behavior. And um, kids get a, a bad rap sometimes or they get you know a lot of marks on their IEP that then when handed to uh, a music teacher or a teacher who is in an inclusive classroom it's it's really intimidating and it's really scary and um, that that projects to the way that the other students see them and so I am just a super big advocate for all of us presuming competence first and um, knowing that we may not know everything there is to know about that child if they can't tell us reliably. 